is Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today, let me preface this by saying, if you saw uh, the community tab earlier, if you saw the posting I made, I'm shooting today's show on my Sony bloggy camera. It's about 10 years old, still 1080p quality. Fully automatic though, so hopefully the autofocus doesn't get too crazy, but I just thought I'd change it up a little bit and use that today. Um, today though, what I really wanna to talk to you about, uh, we're gonna review a new CD player, and uh, prior to that, I wanted to talk to you about something. This is completely my opinion. This is my opinion. We've done a separate show on the scientific reasons why CD sounds better than vinyl, but what I really wanna to talk to you today is about the value that you really get with a CD player compared to other things. So, looking at this very rudimentary chart here, um, I've illustrated the difference in price between an entry-level record player and uh, a mid, you know, decent, what folks would say, a lot of folks would still say beginner level, but, you know, for most people, you know, a significant investment, $150 and up for a good turntable. And in my estimation, in my experience, there's quite a difference in sound quality between an entry-level suitcase player and more of a component-level one, especially depending on what kind of speakers you connect it to. So your, your investment really goes a long way. Taking another page here uh, for cassette tape players as well, you know, $10 to $20 for an entry-level, sort of like a Jensen-type, you know, belt clip, Walkman-type of product is going to yield, you know, quite noticeably lesser quality sound than a higher end deck, which, you know, higher end decks now are pretty much used only because even new Marantz decks use the same, you know, Tenashian tape mechanism. So uh, a lot of this for cassette tapes applies to um, used equipment, but still you invest a lot, you get a noticeable increase in sound quality. And when you think about this in terms of CD players, and that's what I really want to talk about, I feel like in my experience, a $10 to $20 CD player, like one we're looking at today, is going to yield almost nearly identical sound quality as a high-end CD player, like my Sony DVP-7000, I think it is, it's a $1,000 transport, which by the way, if you hear uh, <clears throat> people talk about CD transports versus CD players, CD transports are CD players that don't have the... Uh, um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, what is it called? Everybody's, you know, screaming it out right now. The DAC, don't have the digital analog converter. So basically, my, the Sony is actually a CD player. It's not a, it's not a transport. But it's considered an audiophile grade unit. Originally $1,000, although I did get mine for seven bucks at Goodwill. <laughs> but the sound quality on a cheap one compared to these high-end ones, there's not a huge difference. There really, really isn't. So that's one reason why I think CD players are great because you get into an entry level unit like this. Yeah, this is gonna be an affordable unit. It's a starting point, uh, but the sound quality is most certainly gonna be comparable, very comparable and not noticeably different than super high end equipment. And that's what I love about compact discs. So let's go ahead and open this up. Very small box, which always cracks me up. The earbuds, these are gonna be, you know, basic, not the greatest earbuds you ever heard, not comparable with like iPhone ones, but yeah, I've had these exact same ones before. So you'll definitely want to upgrade those, but they'll get you started. Let's see here, so the CD player itself, I love the timing, all day long. I could have filmed any time today, and the time I pick is when the lawn crew shows up. Okay, so here we go. Here is the CD player itself. Um, it is a shiny plastic, so it's probably gonna be a little bit susceptible to fingerprints. The weight is comparable. To, I mean, it's what I'd expect. It doesn't seem super cheap light. It doesn't seem super heavy. Interesting. The back is a matte plastic. This is the model TDM02. There's the battery compartment. It does run on AA, so being an entry level, CD player, you're gonna provide the batteries. It's not gonna have a charge, rechargeable one. USB capability is there, and that's cool. So, yeah, let's go ahead and open it up. It's got a little protective cardboard in there to protect the transport. 
sort of a shiny plastic on the inside. Interesting placement for um, the laser diode and transport mechanism, lower left, usually they're upper left. We've got the indents for uh, removing a three centi or a three inch CD and a full size one as well. As far as transport controls, we have play, pause, stop, mode select, what is this, program button, track skip and eject, and over here, we do have volume knob. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, check this out. See how there's a volume knob right there? But on the product box, there's a volume switch buttons, and that's what I was expecting, was these clicky buttons. I don't like that for volume control. I think that the knob is much better. So interesting, they've modified it. So this is slightly different. Besides that, it looks the same to me. I mean, I don't see any other difference. Uh, headphone jack, and then the uh, USB power supply as well. I don't think there's any other power supply. Interesting too, because this one does not show the USB. It shows, you know, a regular DC power supply. So this is interesting. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and put some batteries in it and give it a test. Again, I apologize if the show seems janky. We're trying a couple different things and our timing is impeccable. I'm gonna put these Rayovac rechargeables in. And we'll go ahead and put a CD in. I've got some interesting music to share with you guys today. We're gonna to be using a speaker connected to the headphone jack. All right. Start with, here we have an album that every song on it's good. Shania Twain. This is one of those. Every, every one is good. Is that interesting? So like if I try to close it here, doesn't like to close. You have to close right where the latch is. And we're gonna hit play if I can remember where. Oh yeah, over here. So the display, very basic LED or LCD. Excuse me. Oops. Let's go, girls. Skip through this. Kick it. Sound quality is great. Sounds really good. This is a great album. Literally every song is good. It does have a 60 second anti-skip. So some people don't like that or they don't like the fact you can't turn it off. Because of an anti-skip CD player, the audio is buffered into RAM. Sometimes that can introduce some quality compromise. So I'm not gonna test out the programming Welcome capabilities. Welcome to the big show. He could go all the way. Jock jams. Ow. Man, this takes me back. This is like my 90s. Hey. Coolio. It's very responsive. It's very responsive. I like that about it. When you advance the tracks, it really does advance quickly. And one more, let's, just for the heck of it. It only plays CDs, no MP3s. Um, you could put in CDRs and CDRWs, so it'll read those types of discs that are dye stained. But yeah, cool CD player, love it. And again, I you don't meet many CD players that are really bad. It verse, Instead of the quality of the sound, it really comes down to the build quality, the construction. Do you like the buttons? Do you like the display? Do you like the feature set? Do you like the way the volume is designed? Do you like you know those aspects more so than the sound quality? Because you know, back to my chart, my experience is that an entry level CD player sounds as good as a new one. I don't, now if you go in and look at the specs, there's gonna be very minimal differences. But again, those minimal differences are gonna be like that between the high end and the low end compared to, you know, that on cassette or vinyl. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for being out there in general. Thank you for bearing with me. 
as my lawn crew is trimming my lawn. I really much appreciate that <laughs> and apologize for the noise. Also, thanks for hanging in there while we try out this camera. And I've used it once or twice before. Typically though, I don't like the autofocus. Controls aren't as good as an iPhone, so which is what I film most of the shows on. If not that, then I use the, the big camera rig. So anyway, hope you guys are having a great day. We've got lots more cool stuff coming your way. We're working on some really cool things. Uh, all of that reel-to-reel uh, -reel stuff is in Fartemark's hands now, so he's working on that. Hopefully we get the any belts that needs replacing, although I think that one's an idler drive, not belt driven, the Electra. And um, capacitors replaced, all that good stuff. I look forward to experimenting with that, and we'll do a lot of fun shows and stuff on that as well. You know, I'm looking at this image, looks a little bit overexposed. The black color of the CD player may be tripping it out a little bit. I wonder if I take that off frame if it darkens a little bit. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Anyway, just a little experiment there, guys. Hope you thought that was fun. That's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.